everyone. As you join, you're going to be muted because we're expecting a great crowd tonight for a wonderful event. So welcome. Um, we have Donna Miller-Small today to go over terrific strategy tips. Um, you'll notice that you're muted because we realize that a lot of times if people aren't muted that it just gets too noisy and we hear background stuff and everything. So we pre be staying muted um, towards the end and during it, if you have any questions in the chat, you could chat to, there's two names that are Modern Mahjong. You could send a text, to, a message to Donna or Dara and or both of us, and we will continue to monitor that and um, send them on to Donna Miller Small to answer as we go. So we're just gonna give everybody some time to join us and Thank you for joining us, taking time out of your Sunday to learn about Mahjong. Recognize a lot of faces. Hello, everyone. So. <laughs> and I want to personally welcome all the Donnas because growing up, I didn't know any <laughs> other Donnas in the world. But we and have by the way, Donnas on tonight. By the way, if you look, you could see Donna Modern Mahjong and Donna Miller Small. They are not the same person. <laughs> they are two different Donnas. Because we, and I'm sure the faces, the yes, faces I'm sure Linda Feinstein different. and Linda Fisher in New York get the same thing because I've emailed one of them, meaning to email the other one. So it's it's a lot of Donnas in the Mahjong world. Well, I'm happy to meet other Donnas. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. Yeah, that's kind of how we got connected because people thought yes. I, yeah. you were me. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that's so. the wonderful thing about the Zoom world um, is sure. how well we can connect over the the miles yes yeah someone well, asked I mean, if i was named after the donna reed show i said no no i don't <laughs> think so but uh susan said there's a lot of susans yes there's a yeah. lot of susans there's not a lot of daras no. <laughs> as a kid i would always be very disappointed that i couldn't find something in my name at disney world like there was never anything spelt d-a-r-a -A. it was mm -hmm. now i kind of think it's cool well, Donna Miller Kasman, you and I will have to compare notes about how we got the name Donna. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure there's a story there. That's right. So, so we'll give everybody some time because I know if anybody could like raise their hand or wave or tell us in the chat, if you already registered, did you have to fill out the information again when you went? See, we don't know why Zoom is doing that. It's supposed to be if you registered, you just click on the link and go right in. So for some reason, it's making people do that again. Also, we while we're waiting, um, if you happen to have your card with you, it might be helpful because I'm going to be discussing some hands. It's not necessary, but if you've got <laughs> I it, see everybody we always up have our card it. near us in the pocket in, no. in, the, in the den. Yeah. So um, yeah. just a, a little. Um, no, Donna made life. fun of me because I bought four. And she said, what do you need four for? I'm like, I need one for the house. I need one for my purse. I need one in case I lose the one in the house. So <laughs> And it's so, been fun. We've seen people start decorating the card with yes. stickers or bling or, you know, it's yep. a lot of fun to personalize yep. them. Nope. Grace that's, has her that's card. So nobody walks off card. with your, nobody walks off with your card. I put my yes. initials on it, some stars, yes. my address so, so label. Far, I mean, we've read that much with the card, but we've really enjoyed it. It's been a very interesting card. I mean, my mom's been playing for, I think over 60 years. And she said there's hands on it that she's never seen before. And it's really impressive that during a pandemic, they met. So for those of you who don't know, um, every year the Mahjong League meets from a little bit after Labor Day uh, for a few months. And they actually take suggestions. We discussed this once before. If you want to, you could send snail mail to the Mahjong League with your suggested hands and they consider them. And we know people who have gotten their hands on the card. And then what they do is they play the hands before COVID in person and keep going over them to make sure that there's not too many flowers in the hand. There's, there's not certain, like one year there were a lot of fives and you know people were saying, oh, it was hard to get a hand with five. They sit there and test the hands together to make sure it's a cohesive hand. That's why people that we know that work for the league hate the atomic hand. I don't know if any of you play oh. with atomic. I mean, we do sometimes, but you know, it kind of changes the whole dynamic of their hard work, but uh, Julie says she misses the math problems. A lot of people have said that. I think so, but the re I have a feeling from a little birdie, um, those hands required a lot of flowers. So if it was another hand with four flowers and there's so many hands with three, two pongs of three, 
they would have had to get rid of a lot of the other flower hands and people really wanted hands with three flowers. So they gave them that back. So they had to take away something. So something to look forward to next year. Claudia so says, drummer that odd, even with wins, you know. Yeah, can't have everything, but I think they yeah. really shook things up and were very creative this year. Yeah. And I, I would love to be a fly on the wall when they're putting that, hand, the, that car together, wouldn't you all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I picture them sitting there. Maybe they use an Excel sheet with chicken scratches. How many, how many hand, how many they made of this hand? And I think they do keep track of the hands that are made so they can uh, figure out the values too, um, I oh, yeah. would imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So if we're, um, let me see, let me get back to the screen. Um, hold on one second. So um, I think we could get started, Dada. What do you think? Yep. We're, yeah, we can get started. Okay. So is my screen, if anybody wants to give me a thumbs up if they see my screen? Yeah, I can see your right. screen. Okay. So it says Zoom agenda picking a hand. Okay, so if, um, for those of you who are new to Zoom, um, welcome. The, my name is Dara and we have two Donnas on tonight. Uh, we are two friends that played Mahjong uh, over 10 years ago and we started a small Mahjong business. We were only in business for less than a year when COVID hit. And we realized that Mahjong is really um, some of the main source of socialization for a lot of players. And we started started doing our, our first one, we had 24 people and we were absolutely thrilled that 24 people wanted to come join us on Zoom. We started virtual tournaments, which are still going on. We're doing one currently right now through June 21st. And you could continue playing um, several times if you wanna keep entering. And the proceeds from that, we're donating a percentage of proceeds to Alzheimer's. So um, we appreciate your support of our small business. Our website's modernmahjong.com. At the end of this, we'll show you, we have another Zoom coming up with Michelle Frizzell and we have great Mother's Day gifts coming up. And um, Don, Don, every time I say Donna, I'm like Donna miller Um Do you wanna, you wanna wrap up at the end? I'll stop now and then you'll- Yeah. Okay, okay, so Donna Miller-Small, we will now turn over the mic to you. Just so you know, if the, screen is blocked, you could click on the top right. There's a little, we call it the Brady Bunch screen. You could take that and you could move it away so that that's not blocking your um, screen. And if you have any questions, feel free to chat to Do Donna or I, and we will respond. Okay, so let's start. <laughs> okay, so before I dive in, I just wanna say thank you to Dara and Donna for hosting us tonight and for all that they do for the Mahjong community. And they do a lot for, with two people. <laughs> um, and also, if you haven't explored their website, which I took a little more time to do today, take a look maybe after we're finished because they have very unique products. I love, especially the dice. And many of us have been collecting sets during COVID and wouldn't it be nice to have better dice, you know, to go with those gorgeous sets and tablecloths that we have? So they have some great stuff. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna talk about picking a hand, some, some specifics before we really get into some examples. Um, Julia Roberts, who does play Mahjong, and sometimes I think she plays with Sarah Jessica Parker, I guess if they're in town together, but, um, I heard her on a talk show describing Mahjong as making order out of chaos. And so when we open 13 or 14 tiles, it can look chaotic. So just a couple of things to think about or that I do and I wanted to share. We start with the Charleston. And I think it is one of, if not the most critical part of the game. And as we start the Charleston, remember the goal is initially not to pick a hand, but to find a neighborhood, a section on the card. When I say neighborhood, I mean section on the card. And some of you might be old enough to remember Bette Midler and her song, You Gotta Have Friends. 
And it's a good tune to remember when you are searching for a neighborhood. When I mean a neighborhood, I mean sections of the card. Do you have a lot of evens? Do you have a lot of odds? Do you have a lot of like numbers? Do you have a more high numbers? Do you have more low numbers? Do you have a lot of wins, a lot of dragons? And even if you don't have exact combinations that you need in that neighborhood, especially at the beginning, that's fine because they'll still be friends even if they're single tiles. And you'll see some of this when I go through um, picking a hand and showing you some examples. And hopefully by the end of the passing or as you begin to play, you're gonna have more friends to make a hand or to support starting a hand. The other thing I wanna share is pairs. They are so important because as we know, and even I'm asked a lot by beginning students, you can't use a joker in a pair. And that's why they're so important. And they should be a guiding factor as you're looking at picking a hand. The other thing I wanna share with you is Remember, let the tiles lead you. And that's what, what, what I mean by looking at evens, odds. We all have favorite hands. We certainly can force hands. I don't wanna work any harder than I need to. So let the tiles lead you. That is what I try to do in my better moments. Okay, so let's start um, with the hand on the screen. So, wow, three jokers. I'm like, but I get three jokers. My mind goes to Quince. My screen name used to be in the old days on the Mahjong, Quince Essential. So <laughs> I love the Quince. And with three jokers, why not? But look at this opening hand. We don't have a pair. We've got a couple of friends, the one bam, two bam, three bam. We've got an east. Um, so. I'm thinking the quince section with something. That's why I'm going to save the east. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to pass. Um, I'm going to pass. You're going to see it: the five dot, the four crack, and the one dot. So we can go to the next picture. <laughs> yep. So I'm thinking about you know that's that that hand that first hand is to me the easiest hand in quince. So I'm passing. Um, I, I passed, we passed a right. What did we get in? Not terribly much. We got a one dot. Um, and it's kind of friends with the one band. We got a second east. That's a good thing. So we're going to pass our first left and I'm going to pass. Um, Your first across. I'm sorry, across. We're going to pass a four dot, a six dot, and a nine crack. Okay. We didn't get much on that. Um, I'm gonna pass it on to the left. We're gonna pass the a five dot, a six crack. So nothing much is coming in. The three crack could be friends with the one, two, three. We're gonna pass it on and hope something comes in. So let's see. So the second left, again, we didn't get much on the first left, but we got a green. So that was a good thing. So I'm passing the one dot, the three crack, the four crack. I try not to pass tiles that are friends, but sometimes you can't help it. So we passed the second left. I did a must across, um, which wasn't, wasn't a lot, but we did get into flowers here. So, you know, flowers are a good thing. So the last right, I'm going to hold on to my east. I'm going to hold on to the, the, um, the dragons, and I'm gonna hold the flowers. And let's do the final right and see where we end up there. Okay, so guess what? I got a one bam. That was a good thing. So I've got a pair of ones, I've got east, I've got a green, I've got a soap. So I'm in between two hands. And the tiles are pretty even. So one hand is that hand that was put up with the winds, a dragon, 
and we only need four wins in this hand this year, and the one BAMs we want to use, and maybe the flowers, we will see. So those are the two hands, and I remember playing this hand online, and guess what came in? The ones with the dragons and the east, um, that's what came in. So I made a quint. How lovely. Sometimes you have three jokers and you don't make a hand. So I'm happy. Yep. All right. So let's go on to, are there any so questions? So let's hear before we, before we go on, does anyone have any questions? And if they would have done something different, you uh, could Mary say Mary said, yeah, yeah, we're gone for the fourth win. Yeah. That was the other one that we were going to type right. in as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, that was definitely an option, but it depends what you pick in. Mm -hmm. And I picked in the East and the Greens and made that hand. I, I didn't care which hand I made. If I had picked in more flowers and some ones and twos, I would have gone that way. So, so I was qu either, Question for you, or. Donna. So when you, when you teach, do you, I, I find that new players a lot of times either do one of two things. Either they want to commit right away during the Charleston from the first deal to a hand and don't want to budge, or they collect tiles and hoard them and don't want to give anything up because they think it's a good tile. So how do you teach players to kind of follow the tiles? You know, if they're very beginning players, pick a hand and go for it. If you can't hold to, if you can't sit on the fence and figure out what to do, pick a hand. And I have to tell you, um, just going along with that, what I'm finding with this card is there, as somebody did the compilation that you all love posted, thank goodness, a thousand ways to make a hand. So there are so many ways to make a hand that I'm thinking this year, maybe it pays to commit a little earlier and go for a hand. So, um, well, Derek, first of all, a few people, are, we have to pick, uh, catch up on the questions, but someone asked what year card we're using. We're using the new 2022 card, um, yes. just so everybody knows. Um, and by the way, folks, if you don't have your card and you can't follow exactly, um, this is going to be up on YouTube. So you can go back and review this section with your card and, um, you know, uh, take advantage yeah. of that. And then another question we had from Susan, she was saying, of course, I'd want a, hand, a pair if I had it. Would you recommend not going for a hand with a pair if you don't have both at the end of the Charleston? With a quint? I don't want to leave myself, leave myself needing a pair. Never. Never, ever, ever. Yep. And I have to tell you, when I don't take my advice, I'm sorry. Oh, actually, Susan corrected because oh. her comment, her follow-up comment was she just meant in general. If you are going for any hand, not even a quint, if you're going for any hand, would you not go for it if you don't have the pair at the end? Uh, well, and it's funny, I'm talking about this somewhere later in my presentation, but that's okay. Um, yes, when in doubt, even if I have more tiles with the hand, I don't have the pair, I'm going to go with the other hand where I don't need the pairs. I will qualify that though. If there's a hand with two pairs, like the one, two, three, four, five in consecutive run, you know, this, the same hand that's there every year. If I have one of the two pairs and one of the other tiles, half of the pair, I will, might go for that hand, but I don't look for trouble. So my answer is when in doubt, go with the other hand that's not the pair. Well, cause in winds and dragons, you've got the four east, the four west, and then one, two twos and three threes. You only have, you don't have two twos here, but we're not done with the Charleston yet. So you could hold off and think about it. Well, and in this hand, I'm, I wouldn't be looking at the east west with yeah. the, with that. I'm looking for a quint cause right. I've got, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of good tiles. Right. Yep. Okay. So now I'll go to the next. Okay. okay, here's so a, example two. Um, okay, I've just got to pop my screen down. Okay, so example number two. Well, we don't have any jokers, and I'm going to talk about jokers later, but it's I'd rather have the right tiles, honestly. I don't get 
Um, oh, we lost the screen for us. I'm Google. doing it on purpose because for some reason oh. someone was able to draw on Someone the is drawing on the, okay. So, that's oh I goodness. don't know how someone was able to draw. So can you see it again now? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> okay, I just wanted Thanks. to, get, it was just bothering me. I was like, I keep seeing these yellow lines. Okay, oh my we're goodness. back, we're good. Okay, so here we are opening up. You know, we have a few friends here. We have, you know, four, six, eight, starting of a two, four, six, eight. We have a four crack, an eight crack, two eight dots. That's kind of where I would focus in first. Um, so we have to do a right. Um, I'm going to pass the one crack, the three, um, one crack, the three dot, and the seven dot. I want to keep the pair of eights. I'm going to talk about pairs later. Um, so what did we get in? Not much. We got a seven bam in. That works with the six, sixes, sevens, and eights. That's a friend. So we're going to hold on to the seven bam. And just to, and just to interrupt real quickly, um, I, we typed in the chat the two hands that you're considering as you go along. So okay, if you fine. don't have your card, it's the flower six 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 seven 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 eight eight eight, which could be in one or three suits and here it's one suit and then the other is the classic two four six eight in two or three suits so Correct. okay sorry and to me that's yeah. that I'm sorry, i just want to say want something to... else like if people are, uh, can't see the card or the you know the hands the tiles if you're in view you can go side by side so you'll see donna speaking and the slide and then you could mm -hmm. drag it over so it makes the slide bigger and donna smaller so just slide right. over and that will help um, okay, go ahead. So great, great suggestion. Yeah, great right. suggestion. We'll keep the seven um, bam. Yeah. Right. So the seven bam's a friend. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to save that, and um, we're going to we're going to give some tiles across. I'm going to give the five dot, um, the three crack, and the north across. I don't think you could see it on the screen, but that's okay. Yeah, both, I, I'm, can you see my arrow when I point? Yeah. Is my yeah. arrow? Okay. So when it you say the tiles, I'll just big, point. It depends how big your computer screen is. Yeah. Too. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we did an across. Um, we saved the seven bam. Um, I got a second four crack here. That's a friend. You know, it's a friend for that two, four, six, eight. It's a friend for something else that's going to show up. So I'm going to. Um, break up the eight. I'm going to pass the eight crack, a south, and a nine bam. First Just before left. you go on, um, and I know a lot of times there's, you know, it, there's a lot of different hands to choose from. Would you consider the closed, concealed hands and the singles and pairs of the ones with the two, four, six, eight with the eights? You or know, since you. I didn't have the twos and fours there. And I got to tell you, folks. I'm not happy with that amount of twos. You know, there's right. a lot of twos in that two, four, six, eight section. It's the one thing that I find tough because um, there's four hands in that section that needs pairs of twos, let alone uh, the closed hand. So I didn't think about that. I guess one could. Um, I'd be happier if I had at least a two bam there. But, you know, a three, six bams is a power combination. Right, you have three, yeah. six bams. Oh, no, power. definitely. So that's kind of leading the way. So yeah. um, let's do that first left. Let's see what we got in. Can you move the screen down? A, a, well, a little, yeah, good. Okay. So I'm getting rid of the four bam. Um, I'm getting rid of a one dot and a one bam that came in. And we're going to pass, pass those along and do our second left. So what did we get in? Guess what? We got an important tile here, a five crack, because the golden hand on the card can be four, five, six, seven in two suits. So it's it's a it's a thought. We're gonna hold the five crack. So what are we gonna give across? I'm gonna break up the eight dots. I don't break up pairs unless I have to, but also folks, I like when tiles can work for two different hands so the four cracks can work for a two four six eight but it can also work for a four five six seven so they're all friends these these three different hands we're considering because now we're going to give away the eight dots so that takes away a two four six eight 
So we're going to pass an 8 dot, a 1 crack, and a 3 dot across. And let's see what we get. Guess what? <laughs> we got another 5. Who knew? <laughs> That's a good thing. So that 4, 5, 6, 7 is looking even better. I wish we could use two flowers. Right. So we have to do a final right. I'm given a north, an 8 dot, and I'm going to steal a tile. Now, when it comes to stealing the tile, and I know there's some teachers that say never pass a flower, other people say never say never. Obviously, you still have that six, seven, eight that does use the flowers. So in that case, you would keep it. When you know you're not going to use a tile that's in demand, what makes you say, I'm not going to pass it on a, you know, on the last pass that you don't need you to know do what? I'm all three? Talk, I'm going to talk about that, Derek, when I talk okay. about flowers. Put it here. I mean, because I still have yeah, here you could use it. Oh, yeah, I still have three, four, five, six. I got eight tiles supporting right. that six, seven, oh, yeah. eight hand. So I'm going to steal a tile, particularly on, Definitely. you know, a final right. So um, so I had two ways to go. And I remember I remember hands. My father was a bridge player. He remembered hands. He had played 20 years ago. I remember <laughs> I well, this was only last week. I ended up getting the four, five, six, seven hand because I could call the four cracks. I could call the five cracks. I was lucky. I picked in a couple of jokers and I made the hand. So um, questions about, and you know what, folks, the other thing I didn't say when we started, people see hands differently. You know, their eyes go a different way. They are, you know, it's a different lens. It depends what lens we look through. So you may look at a hand differently than I would. I just can share with you what the, um, what the parameters I try to uh, abide by that you can do anything. And, you know, there's a lot of luck in this game, but consistently to win takes skill. And the more skillful and um, the, um, the better you can really hone in to what are your greatest chances of winning? Really, is that's interesting. When you were saying you could see things differently, we got a message from Elisa that said she would have wanted to keep the eights for a light hand. So I think a lot of people just have the way they yeah, see the hands have, are just different. You know, Elisa, I thought of that, but those three six bams weren't going to work in those like numbers, and that was that was a big deal. You know, punks are powerhouse combinations, so. Um, that's really kind of what the driving force of this hand was, those three six bands. So if people I are ask... asking us to say which section we're talking about and which oh. hand. Um, okay. So it, it should be in the chat. The four, five, six, seven is on in, is in consecutive. consecutive. And consecutive it's, on the golden hand that's there every year. And this year it's is the with fifth line ones. down. So it's the fifth line down. Um, so that is for that hand. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So before you before you discuss um, this next one, maybe we could ask people if they want to message us just by looking at this before Donna goes over what she would pass. If you could just look at it and think of you know what you would pass. Just give everybody a few seconds to think of what they would get of what Good they want to use, what tiles go together. So I can't really see everybody because I'm sharing my screen, but I think we gave everyone enough time. So, okay, take it away. <laughs> okay, so yeah. here we go. Remember I talked about pairs being important. That's the first thing I look at. We have a pair of six bands, we have a pair of greens and they are friends. They're friends um, for a, uh, several different hands. I'm not gonna go into it now, but they're friends. The rest of it, the dots are friends, but there's, you know, but the six dot and the soap are friends with the six spam and the greens for like numbers with dragons, the second hand on the like numbers section. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about here. So what am I going to uh, pass? Uh, I look for pairs. There, remember, we talked about how important pairs are. Um, so, um, I just got to get rid of the chat. Good. All right. So the six bands, the five band, the greens, the six dot, you know, there's a few dots there. So what am I going to pass? I'm going to pass 
to the right, a two crack, a five crack, they are kind of friends, but whatever, and a four dot. I'm sorry, okay. a few people have said, what is the golden hand? I think you were saying that that hand under consecutive fifth one down is always on the card. So that's why you call it the golden hand. Yes. Is that your term? That's your hand. term for it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's been talked yeah. about by some noted names in the field also. Um, it's every year. And the good thing about it is think of all the combinations you can do with that hand. And right. there's no pairs, you know. And what's interesting is this year there's seven hands, depending on how you count it, that are the same as last year. But other than that, what's very interesting about this card is that normally you could just follow either um, people call it a bell curve when it's a pair, a pung, a kong, and then it goes down to, um, or it's like a step ladder where this year, if you look under the first consecutive run, it's pair, pair, th three, three, four. So it's pair, pair, pung, pung, kong. Usually that matches the one, three, five, seven, nine. So if you memorize the one, you know, the pattern where this year they mixed it up. So the patterns, you can't just memorize one pattern and know the card. That's right. And I would call this card shake, rattle and roll because they really <laughs> shook up things. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm teaching some beginning classes and I'm thinking, I think this is a good card for newbies to learn on because they're going to get a whole um, different level of um, looking at hands. And when I think it's going to be easier to transition for new people. Um, when when the combinations uh, get more um, stable in years to come. All right. Before so you we continue, we had a few interesting here. comments. Oh, go ahead. Um, Susan Susan and Phyllis both wanted to keep the four dot for three, four, five, six. Right. Um, oh. Carolyn wanted to know why not pass the two. Passing the four eliminates the consecutive run. I could see that. I okay. could absolutely. So, I mean, it's that. like, you know, it's Baskin Robbins and it's just like Donna Miller, you know, something Mall said, you know, there's 31 flavors. Everybody could see it a different way. Um, we love getting the insight into how someone else sees it. I don't know if your group plays with a better, but some people hate when a better watches them because they don't like those eyes over the shoulder feeling that I'm going to you know, talk about betters. I'm going to talk about <laughs> And by the way, I wouldn't pass a two dot and a, um, you know, I wouldn't pass a two dot and a two crack it's together. Not, right. not the, and it's funny, we're talking about one of the takeaways of the early um, look at the card is don't pass twos, but I'm not seeing people go for those two hands that much, but you know. Actually, somebody posted that the most common Kong, I think it was, you know, for people who are new, Kong is a set of four like tiles. The most common number Kong is five, which yeah, is surprising. Used, you would think middle, it's two. But I'm, I'm seeing a lot of nines also. A lot yeah. of nines go up. All right. So I picked the two crack, the five crack, the four dot, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I kept the three and the six because, again, I'm thinking with using those six bams. So, yes, I could see three, four, five, six, but let's go. All right. Can't save everything. But <laughs> look what comes in. We get a three bam in. So I'm... You know, thinking of those six bams, I'm thinking of the three bams, go with six bams. So I'm going to get rid of the five. Um, you know, could I have gotten rid of a five dot and said maybe? Um, but I'm thinking of the three, six, nine section. So we're passing those tiles across. Okay. And guess what? We get another three bam in, folks. So that's supporting those six bams even more. So what am I going to give up? I got a one bam and a red. Um, it's not really working here that well. I guess there's a three, six. Now, I, I want to use the pair of greens. Now I've got threes and sixes. They're all friends. That's what we're looking for. So I'm passing along that, that pass, and let's see what comes in. Okay, um, a flower comes in. That's, that supports um, one of the hands that we're going to show you that I ended up landing on. There were two. So I'm going to get rid of the three dot, the three, six, nine hand, two flowers, three, six, nine. So I've got one flower. So that's friends there. So that's why I'm giving up the three dot 
we're going to pass it along. I'm still holding on to that six dot because it's friends with the six bands. Okay, so let's see what comes in. Okay, um, just need to click. I need to just get rid of the chat here for a minute. Um, Tell me if I went too far, because I think I-, I Yeah, could I, you um, go down a little bit more because, yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Um, okay. Um, I thought I went, yeah, you went down too far. So what did we get? Interesting folks, what came back? The same tiles I passed on the first right. The two crack, the five crack, and the four dot. That's information, but nobody is, seems to be saving those tiles at this point. So we're sending them back along, across. Now what did we get in the across? Aha, a soap. That's a pair of soaps that goes with the six dots, right? I'm liking it. Um, and so now we have to pass two tiles to the right. Um, there's a two crack, a seven dot. Um, I'm going to steal again here on my last right. You know, I could have given the nine dot up as a third tile, but I don't know. I didn't at that point. Okay. I didn't get anything on the last right. I, the courtesy pass a one crack and a two dot, and I've given those and I don't think we got anything. So let's talk about the two hands um, that we landed on. I think um, Dara put them in the chat. Um, okay, so this is what I got in the, um, the courtesy. So I'm between two hands. The three, six, nine hand we talked about, there's seven tiles for that. Um, were, <coughs> were a few less, um, the, the like numbers with the sixes. So I'm gonna see what comes along and I'll tell you what came along in that hand. I ended up pulling in six dots and six cracks and made the like number hand. But <laughs> I didn't know that here. If you're a new so player- you, It was I the, second like, the like, second like number? Second like numbers. And again, I had the hardest part of that hand. I had the pairs. If I hadn't had the second pair, I might have not gone for that hand. I might have been closer on the three, six, nine with the greens. So, um, so that's three hands. Does anybody have any comments or questions about the third hand that we just? Well, somebody asked, "Can you steal on the computer?" Yeah, um, I yeah. just did. This was on real mahjong. The computer right. just you put past two, and it just puts one on for you. So yes. Yeah, the way you do it is you just put either zero, one, two, or three tiles, and then you just click the, the you click on the word pass. And if you didn't put any tiles, it'll just take all three from the player that passed them to you. Right. Um, okay. People were saying so, they could see what new tiles you were getting, but as I was explaining, they automatically go into the hand in the order. Right. So, you know, the next so we're gonna we're gonna replay it. So when you replay when we replay it on YouTube and you could pause it as it replays, you could see what hands go in. We just thought this was a great way that you could be in the mind of a teacher as she's getting hand tiles to see how she thinks of readjusting as the tiles are given to her. So and it's the thing I'm asked to do most. I do I do a lot of online classes, I do a lot of strategies and people and I'll put up real mahjong and play hands and oh people love it and yeah somebody had an interesting conversation you can't depend on picking flowers or getting past flowers and they're right because there's quite a few hands this year that require flowers and many flowers well we're going to talk about flowers in a minute yeah. but uh, before i do that um are we finished with the picking a hand hopefully i've given you some good um pointers that you know if you pick up one thing um it could, it could be helpful. So, no, that was great. So up, was, upcoming, the next thing, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just so people know what to expect. Next, Donna's gonna go over jokers, flowers, and knowing your competitors. So I will okay. stop the share. And now the way you can do it is on your screen, you can click that Donna speaker view. So you see Donna on the whole view, um, or you could have it like we call it the Brady Bunch view where you could see everybody you know, watching along. 
you know, because there are people are saying raise it up, they can't see it, I, you know, that kind of thing. But I think okay. that's within well, everyone's control. Yeah. Right, right, right. And control. if you have questions, folks, um, you're going to get my um, contact information at the end. I love answering questions. I love talking about Mahjong. So, um, you know, it, it's something I love, love to do. So um, this isn't the end. It's the beginning. And there's lots of places to go. Don and Dara are great at answering questions. So um, we have quite a wealth of um, experts to um, help and answer your questions. And of course, you can always call, call the Mahjong League. Um, yeah, we, we laugh. Somebody called us facilitators, and we appreciate that term because we don't consider ourselves experts, but we know who to call that are experts. So, <laughs> just so Lynn and Tony know, we know you've raised your hands, but we're going to try and keep going. And at the end, we'll come back to you and try to unmute you and see what your question is. We're not ignoring anybody. Sure. Okay, <laughs> I better keep moving along. I have a lot of information we want to answer questions. So, I want to talk about jokers. They're nice to have, but the right tiles can be good enough if you, as you saw in some of the hands I did. And I gotta tell you, I was playing on Friday. I didn't have a joker in my hand, but after the passing, I think I had 11 out of 14 tiles. I was almost able to call everything. I picked in one joker and I, and I, may, and I put up the joker in a flower, two flowers, somebody exchanged it and I made a jokerless hand because I had all <laughs> the right tiles. So. Jokers are good, but it's not the end of the world. I want to talk about joker bait, though. And um, we'll put up a, a diagram in a minute, um, but I want to just talk about it for people who don't know about it and give you um, a little bit of a description. And joker bait, which means saving a pair that you don't need. So what are we going to do with that pair? The joker bait strategy happens at about the halfway point in the game. And we're gonna show you what that is um, momentarily. And although the dealer wall varies, the wall that we're breaking is gonna vary. Let's see if we can get the slide up. So, so, um, oh, such nope, Hold on, tiles. nope, I went it's too okay. far, okay. That's okay. So here's the joker bait. And aren't those jokers great? That's such a beautiful set. Um, this is, the, the diagram on the left is the wall after the deal, after we break it and we picked our tiles. So we're getting towards the last wall when we're going to talk about trotting out joker bait, should you have it. Okay, so say you have a pair of seven dots at this point. You're going to throw out a seven dot. And hopefully somebody might need it. We're coming towards the end. Hopefully it's not gonna give somebody mahjong. It's not that much at the end. And somebody calls it. And hopefully they're gonna put it out with a joker. So it could be a pung of seven dots, two seven dots and a joker. Then on your next turn, you've got the other half of the pair. You've got the other seven dot. So remember though, and I've seen people, particularly beginners, they're so anxious to make that joker exchange that they don't pick. So always pick and rack. You know, I feel like I could make a, um, a tape recording when I teach beginning Mahjong, pick and rack, pick and rack. And you guys talked about what racking really means. We're not gonna go there, but for joker exchange, it's, I think of, I, I talk about it as pret pick your tile, rack it, exchange the tile, put it in your rack and throw out. So that's how, you know, and it works, I'd say maybe about 25% of the time, but that's not a bad thing. Um, and the Donna, other thing just so you're explaining about the waiting time, the, the reason that I wait, you know, to the halfway point, Usually people need to get enough tiles so they could actually call the Pong or the Kong. So that's Correct. why you're waiting until they have that amount of time so they Absolutely. can call it. Absolutely. And people might want to not want to call too early. Yes, that's the ideal time. Thanks for um, 
And, and I know you're going to get into flowers later, but I feel yeah. like my joker I, bait with flowers, I do much earlier. I, I, well, the last thing I have down is don't do this with flowers. It's too risky. <laughs> okay. okay? Yeah. No. You can do it with almost, and I wouldn't do it with soaps either. But, um, so that's joker bait and it's, it's not a bad strategy. It works. It's worked for me. Um, so moving right along when a tile is called and a joker or two is exposed check the table to see if the tile called is still alive this is you don't have joker bait you know our eyes my eyes go right into that table when somebody exposes an exposure and it's best to be alert folks if you particularly if you pick the tile and many and i've seen this recently they may be on here, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna identify anything too much. I've seen seasoned players not remember what the exposure was, and they don't remember to do the Joker exchange. Uh, so, a friend of ours, Ter our friend of ours, Teresa, calls it LBD instead of little black dress. Yeah, she calls it look before discard. Want to add something, Dara? Oh, I'm sorry. Look before Teresa discard. came up with LBD. Look before discard. Little black dress, look before discount. Oh, uh, yeah. And, you know, you're not going to hold up a game. But just, boy, when somebody's up there with a joker, my my mind is like, man, I want to get that joker. And so it's, it's and, and a lot of beginners can't remember to look and look at their hand. But seasoned players, you got to know that. And what happens if you forget to do that exchange? Well, when a tile is named, or starts or hits the table, you can't say, oh my goodness, I'm going to exchange it. Maybe in beginning, we let we slide it a little bit. But when it's down, it's done. And nobody can do anything about that. So Donna, a question that we have. Um, a lot of players are advanced here. Some are new. Can you just explain that the only way you can get a range is by a symbol tile for a joker and not the other way around. And that if somebody throws a seven dot and there's a joker that's a seven dot, nobody can take the discarded seven dot to exchange. Right. Once a tile is down, it's done. You can't pick up a tile to exchange it. Never. So thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, Nancy said, say it or lay it means it's down. <laughs> right. If it's named. Mm -hmm. Say it. Yep. Yep. Or late. Um, in a and tournament, if you start to say two and it's a two crack, it's down. Uh, I think the Mahjong League is you fully have to name the tile or if it's hitting the table, it's it's right. considered name. We had a few questions. Why don't you use flowers for joker bait? Someone said, why not flowers and soaps? I'm going to talk about that when I get into flowers. Perfect. Because there are hot tiles just, at the end. That's that's the and answer. Just we, one of the questions that you just we touched on. So tournament rules sometimes are more stringent for lack of a better term. So the Mahjong League, if a tile is on the table, it's down. If you say two, that's not enough to fully name it because that could be a two dot, a two bam, a two crack. If you say soap, it's fully named. So that sometimes confuses players, but in a tournament, two is down. Right, so for, for your play at home, it would be, you'd have to say to BAM. You'd have to say the complete name. Okay. So what if you don't really need that joker? Exchange, even if you don't need it, and I'm gonna give you a, a covenant there, um, most of the time, unless you're splitting up a pair and you're close to Mahjong, like if somebody's got flowers up there and you need your two flowers, and we know pairs are hard to come by. And if they've got a number of flowers up there, that's the only time I might not want to exchange. And when you don't exchange purposely like that, don't let, don't give the information to your fellow Majanistas. You can, you can fake that you forgot to do the exchange. <laughs> I was just going to ask you that. Because etiquette, yeah. a lot of times someone will say, oh, look, did you mean to do that? Yeah, and which you they just, shouldn't. They, they shouldn't. shouldn't. But I'll just say, oh, my goodness, I wasn't paying attention. So Because for players, you know, a lot of times if, if you throw a joker or don't pick a joker, 
some people read into that you're doing a singles and pairs hand and that you only need one tile. That's my next point. There's a bit of a conundrum as I started to think about throwing jokers or exchanging. Whether, the, whether we're going to throw a joker when you're waiting for a must tile. A must tile would be a single tile or a tile to complete a pair. So my thought is if it's a flower I need and I have another tile to throw out and I pick a joker and I can't really use it, I'm going to throw a tile that's in a pung or a kong and save the joker if I need it for a flower, definitely. But think about this. And, oh, and, and it might throw your opponents off because if I'm throwing a tile that is supporting a hand, my opponents, if they see that tile go out, they might think I'm not playing that hand, I'm playing something else. And there's a lot of hands on this card that are very interchangeable. So throwing that tile that's part of your hand instead of a joker may confuse your opponents. However, you may want to throw a joker to rile up your opponents and perhaps put them on the defensive. So think about that. Particularly this year, folks, because this year there are many, many, many single tiles that can give someone mahjong. So almost nothing is safe. So my suggestion to you is when in doubt, throw the joker. You know, and it's nuanced decision making. So I've given you some food for thought. Okay. And I just want to say this because I know there's probably some new people. Oh my gosh, we have 400 people here. There must be some new people. <laughs> we didn't tell you how many. We didn't want you to be nervous. <laughs> I've, I've done this so much. Um, whether it's sporty or for anyhow, I'm just so happy so many people are coming to talk about Mahjong. What could be better except winning a Quintan, maybe. Um, at the end, please throw jokers, please. <laughs> That's strategy 101, but I can't tell you. In the last two weeks, we've had some subs come in and I've seen even the most seasoned players at the end, they're not throwing the jokers. I mean, really, what are you gonna do with them? You can't use them on the next hand. It's not gold for Fort Knox. I mean, <laughs> throw the jokers, please. They're the well, we, safest we, tiles. Well, we were actually asked that and um, somebody said, do you have to break up your hand? And I never heard the term before until we were doing a post about it. And the Mahjong League says you need to, it's called dogging. And when you know you can't win, you start throwing tiles to break up your hands to play defensively. So it can't, it's not an absolute rule. They can't tell you you're not allowed to throw a flower. But if you're not going to win and there's half a wall left, start throwing tiles that you know you think are safe. Right. And we're talking about strategies, not rules. So we're talking about strategy here. And the strategy is if you can't make it, don't give it to somebody else. You want to pay money to them, you know, because you threw an eight dot and it gave them mahjong for a pair. I don't like that. And boy, when, some, when I'm sitting at a table and somebody does that, and if I don't, you know, I got to zip up my mouth, but I'm saying, oh my God, who did they learn from? And the lady that did that two weeks ago learned from her neighbors years ago. I mean, you know, yeah. whatever. And Cindy Sibyl, just, Cindy. Yeah. Oh. Sybil said when you throw a joker, do you say joker or say same? You can say either. Yeah. We, either. we usually say same. Say, yeah. Right. Because yeah. when you say same, it's not calling attention to a joker either. Right. right. Okay. And then Cindy just added, if you don't need the joker, it that should you not exchange it so you're not giving the person a jokerless hand? Well, okay. Yes and no. If there's nothing else on the loose. So if you've got the last tile that you can exchange, you might not want to make them jokerless, depending on how many um, exposures there are. But if those tiles are on the loose, you want to exchange it because you don't want your opponent Someone else to get, to get it to get the joker so that that would be something to consider it's nuanced decision making you got to watch what's on the table but if it's the last seven dot you pick and you don't want to make somebody jokerless you throw out the seven dot and then somebody just asked if you have jokers exposed 
And then during the play, people take the jokers. You don't need to remember that you had jokers. It's at the end of the game is what's important. Is that that's right? Correct. The end of the game is when we throw jokers. Okay. No, no, I mean, okay. somebody was asking, what if you had jokers exposed? You're paid based on the hand at the end of the game. Oh, so, right. right. Yeah, yeah. So if people take those jokers and make you jokerless like they did with me on Friday, I had one joker and I had it exposed. And I was really happy when they exchanged it because guess what? I picked in the tile I needed. So I got jokerless and I picked it. <laughs> that was a somebody, good thing. Somebody was... just asked, and I actually had someone text me the other day, can you pick a single tile for Mahjong? Yeah. Yeah, no, I said, yeah. yeah. You can call any tile for Mahjong too. Right. Even so if it's a joking. single, for anything you can call Mahjong. Right. Okay. Man, well, just just so because nice we have some... Make... Yeah, Just because we have some very new players, any tile except a joker. A joker is never able to be called, never, it's down, it's down. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I, yes. I mean, I know that, yeah. Okay, I've got a lot more to, to yeah. do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Either I need to talk fast or we're going to... No, we're not going to stop. You know, a lot of people are asking questions, so we're going to stop, like, interrupting you and asking. We'll have to do it at the That's end. That's fine, or, and oh. hopefully we'll go over a little bit if it's right. okay. Right. Um, I want to talk about flowers. They've come up. You know, they're the garden that grows when you don't need them and you don't find them when you need them. But anyhow, a couple of pointers. If I start with two flowers, I try to use them when I open up a hand. I don't pass flowers unless it's absolutely necessary. And then if I do, it's only one, never, ever two. That's my rule. And when might I give a flower? On the must across. We do right across left, left, that, that tough across, I might give a flower. If necessary, on that must across, instead of passing two flowers, I might break up a tile in a pung or a kong. Because we're towards the end, maybe it'll go out and I can call it. But that's my thing. I just don't pass pairs of flowers. I don't think it's smart strategy. Look at how there's 39% of hands that have flowers. I don't want to help my opponents that much. I The other thing is, I don't stop the passing a lot. But after that first left, if I only have in the first round of the Charleston, and when we go to the second dance of the Charleston, if I only have two flowers and one other tile, I might stop the passing. So that's, that's my, you know, that's, that's my style and everybody has their style. Now, as we talked about the later in the game, it is the hotter the flowers can be, especially I think this year, when you see a pung of flowers up there, there may be another pung right behind them. So the adage is, if you don't need flowers, get rid of them early and when you pick them late, if you're not making a hand, save them in that, that hand and throw out other tiles. So I'm going to keep going and then we'll get to questions in a minute, if that's okay. Because the next section I think is an important thing. It's about knowing, I say competitors, um, I think it's nicer than opponents. Um, know the people you're playing with. Because there's lots of information there. And you can learn a lot about a player when you are out as the better. And the better is not allowed to say anything to anybody. Watch their style of play, particularly if somebody new is playing in a game or they're subbing. I start watching them so I kind of get a sense of how what their style of play is, what they might say. Um, the other thing I think to, that's important People have different styles of play, and there's one woman who plays in one of my games, and I know she calls everything early. She pushes a hand. Pushing a hand means she'll use a joker on the first tile that goes out to call, and she'll use she'll call a second exposure. And then I watch her, and she takes the chance that she's going to pick in more jokers. So I know she plays like that. And so that gives me information that as we're getting later in the game, and that's her style, and if I'm picking a hot tile that I think might give her mahjong, I might be more likely to throw it 
because I know the way she plays and she might not have the goods at the end. So that's, you know, and I'm not advocating throwing hot tiles to give somebody mahjong as a practice ever. It would only be done if you are close to mahjong and want to take a chance based on knowing this person's style. Okay. Second, talking about style, let's talk about body language. Notice if someone has the habit of sitting forward when they're set. And many players, and I've seen this a lot, they're picking and throwing quickly. Sometimes they're not even racking. They're just turning it over and throwing it. I see Sandy Greenbaum, hi, she's nodding. She plays in my Monday group. Um, they're, and, and even the tournaments will see this. You know, They pick a tile and before it even, they just throw it right out. That's a sign that somebody said. So beware. Um, okay. And you might, because of that, that's going to telegraph that you don't throw a hot tile. They're set. You pick in anything, you put it in your rack. Okay. Unless you want to take a chance. But by then, if they have a few exposures and they're picking and throwing like that, most of the time, somebody said, and I don't want to give somebody mahjong, not necessarily. Okay, so also when there's two or three exposures up, watch where the person is placing their tiles in their rack. Are they moving things around? They can be clues to whether they're set or not. Look, sometimes I'll move tiles around just to throw somebody off that I'm not set, but that's another thing of body language to watch. And by the way, when you're passing tiles, watch to see if somebody saves them. Sometimes people don't even put them in their rack. They look at the tiles, they pass them right on. So again, the more you can remember that happens in the Charleston, the more information you're going to get. And you know what, folks? You know when somebody groans or slams a tile in their rack that they've picked a hot tile. And they're annoyed because they're going to break up their hand. That's giving people information. So if the, you know if that's going to tell me that I don't have to worry about what their exposures are because they're probably not going to throw anything. And just like you're watching your opponents, be aware that your opponents are watching you, your competitors. Be aware what you might be telegraphing to them. Don't groan when you don't pick up jokers. That's the you know. To, to me, there should be no groaning in Mahjong. Can I tell you how many times that, you know, we we open up our tiles and everybody's saying, oh, no jokers again. Well, they're telling me information. They don't have jokers. The walls are going to be rich for me because I might not have jokers either. So mum's the word. Okay. So, and it's etiquette. Well, boy, etiquette. You know, we want harmony. We want nice. You know, complaining is, you know, not a good thing, but it happens and it happens a lot. So um, I'm at the end of what I want to share with you. Uh, do we have time for a couple of questions? Sure, absolutely. Um, this is funny. So what, said, any clues for seeing body language when playing online? <laughs> <laughs> If you're FaceTiming. If you're FaceTiming them or something, but yeah. And you know well, what? By the way, playing online, though, I'm playing against the bots on the computer, at least on Real Mahjong. I have found they go for certain hands. Oh, yeah. So that's a clue. Yeah. So somebody was asking, um, should you not use a joker if the first tile goes out that you need a pung or a con? When do you decide when to make the call? Well, it depends on your style of play and what you're comfortable with. My feeling is if I'm set to call everything, and that doesn't happen that often after the Charleston, if I'm set to call everything, I don't think I'd put up two jokers and a tile to call a Kong right away. But um, if I'm set to call things, I'm going to use my jokers. If I'm not, I'm going to hang back. I'm not going to take the, particularly for a punk, you know, when there's several other tiles, I'm not going to use up my jokers early. That's my style. 
So, and then we had a question, which this might be for other people also. Um, what does the term better mean? Better? The better. Remember, this is a game that was founded, you know, with a lot of gambling. If you think of that about the Asian community, it's big high stakes gambling. You know, Mrs. Basil's mother-in-law won $1,200 in the Catskills <laughs> back in the 50s. So the better we normally play, four people are at a table, we play with five, one is out. And the better cannot say anything about anything, but she walks, she or he walks around after the completion of the Charleston and writes a name who they think is going to win. And then there's a payment thing. We're not going to get into that, but um, um, yes. And I see Toby Salk is with us, so welcome. Um, your book is behind me. Did I need another book on Mahjong? But it's right there. And it's funny, I recommend, I, I taught private to a couple a few weeks ago and I just mentioned the book and when I got there for the lesson, they had it because it's a great book for anybody with great tips, great. It's the most creative book on Mahjong I have seen since I'm teaching. I used to base my teaching on Elaine Sandberg and now my libraries, I've all gotten them to buy the book. And um, it's a fabulous book with, with lots of information. So um, I, um, Karen's been very patient. So I'm going to unmute <laughs> her and uh, she's been raising her hand. And Oh, sure. Well, Karen, you want to unmute yourself? You can ask the question or you can type it in the chat. Two things. Um, there was going to be a tournament in the Washington, D.C. area, but I just got a notice that it was canceled because they're still remodeling the synagogue. So I'm um, waiting. OK, so wait for my clock to stop. But I'm wondering, how do you find out about tournaments in your area? Um, and then we you know, started playing in person again, and there's just started up a group in my neighborhood. And how do you deal with the this one person goes, wait, I have to pick a hand. When the, and I was taught you pick a neighborhood, then you pick the street you want to live on, and then you find the house that you want to buy, knowing that at the last second, you might not go to settlement, you might pick a different house. <laughs> cute. I, that was very cute. cute. I remember that I was taught like in 2005, and I still, it was, it was um, neighborhood, street, house. And then if you don't like your neighbors, you can to say, I'm not going to buy that house. I'm moving. I'm not, right. I'm not steadily. Talk, right. Um, Dara just put up, um, and I was looking at their website today. They have a list of where you can find live games and, and some tournaments. But, you know, synagogues often run tournaments. Um, there are regional tournaments. You're in Washington, D.C., Piscataway. They run tournaments there. Um, Dara, Donna, do you want to uh, add to this? We, we do um, online tournaments. And then also, if anybody has a tournament, we would love it if you emailed us and we'll add it to our directory, as well as anybody who has a tournament, if they're on Facebook, they could create an event that it, then that way it doesn't get lost in future posts on our Facebook group. Because otherwise, you know, it kind of Yeah, I mean, lost. a lot of people might not be on Facebook or social media, but that's the best way to keep up to date with the most, you know, the upcoming tournaments. On our website, we have where do people play, but in terms of tournaments, it's really good to be on a Facebook group like Mahjong Community, and you'll have the most up-to-date And tournament. there are people that do a lot of regional tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, the Mahjong Fever people, um, they're doing them all over the country. Um, so I don't know of other people that are running them, but the Mahjong Fever people um, took over Gladys's business. They took over Joanne Bourne, who ran wonderful tournaments in Piscataway. So it's not a one-day tournament. It's a three-day tournament, but it's an interesting experience, folks. So, okay. And then on that note as well, um, in October, Don and I are returning to MajCon, which um, I don't know if you've heard of like Comic-Con, so last year, Michelle Frizzell and Debbie Barnett started MajCon, which is Majon plus convention, so MajCon. And it was their first one and they really did a wonderful job because they didn't make it seem like the first of. You could tell they were planning for this to be an annual event. So people, the one 
feedback that they really got from people is we want more play. So it's different tracks. There's events for speakers, for players. There's events for speakers, for teachers. And then the last day is either social play or a very relaxed, fun tournament play. Where is so that? Where that's is gonna it? In, that's going to be in Boca. You got to come back down to Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> what, what, what time of the year is that? October 2022. Oh, so it's the perfect time. Yeah, October 10th through the 12th of this year. Um, the website is maj, M A H J C O N dot com, majcon.com. Well, so it was really, it was really very interesting. There's vendors like us, we're there as exhibitors. There's different speakers this year. They're doing something new where Barney Galasio is going to be the um, MC, Andrew Killer is going to be the keynote speaker, Don and I are speaking. Um, Teresa Benassi is going to speak on creating um, drop in games and how to organize that. There's teachers speaking about how to um, teach. So it's just a really interesting thing. And what also is great is just the whole community of right now, I'm looking at a, you know, Brady Bunch screen of Zoom Mahjan players, just seeing, I mean, I see Amy nodding her head, just seeing so many people that also care about the game. And all of a sudden somebody will see someone and go, wait a second, you're Amy R. Wait, isn't your screen name so-and-so on this site? And so it was really a fun experience. And, and they, the first night they have um, a dress up theme. So this year it's going to be um, a sock hop. So that was a lot of fun. Last year it was the great Gatsby. So it's just something interesting. If you want more information, you can go to majcon.com. We put it in the chat. Yeah. And I also want to tell people there's always at every tournament, there's beginners, intermediate, advanced players. So no one should be intimidated. You're not going to be put together with highly skilled players. So I think they do that at Majcon too, right, Dara? At Majcon, I mean, not, not always for... Um, not always, but... Yeah. But the thing about a, a tournament that we, Donna and I went to, it was one of the first ones I went to. And I was so nervous, really competitive players. And the woman next to me looked at me and she picked up a tile and she goes, what's this? And I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> so she didn't know what a dragon was because she had never played on a vintage set before. So if you are playing in a tournament, most tournament rules are they have to be very standard sets. You know, they're not going to have a very ornate set that's going to be allowed to play. But before you mix and set up the, the tiles, please ask to see the flowers, the dragons, and the one bam, because they're very confusing if you haven't played on a set before. Um, Don and I were playing, one of the one bams was a Jewish star, and we were like, which title is this? So it's a great thing to ask. And the yeah. other thing, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. No, just, it's a great thing to figure out beforehand and just to go to uh, modernmajan.com on the very bottom left, it says Barney Galasio card review. We have tips from him for the 2022 card, but also he's done a whole review of entering your first tournament. And it's just great things like bring a sweater, you know, like just silly things, you know, bring a bottle of water, bring a sweater, you know, don't be nervous about just, you know, the first game, maybe just pick and throw and play defensively. Don't even worry. And once you get that first game behind you, it kind of just melts away the nervousness. Yeah, I just want to... Go yeah. Ahead. No, if some, a few people have asked the same questions, so I just want to put it out there and answer it. If your hand is called dead, what happens to jokers that are already exposed? So, I mean, we put this on Mahjong community. There's been several discussions, but it'd be nice to hear from you, Donna. Oh, what happens to, well, the exposures that happened before you called, they were called dead, are alive and they are ripe for picking. The exposure that if, if there's something that identifies you um, with putting the exposure up, that goes back in your hand. Hopefully I've answered that clearly. And uh, you guys have talked about that. You have a wealth, there's a wealth of information on modern Mahjong. So um, look there. And I, I also wanted to say about tournaments. I've taught a class or two about how to play in the tournament. And it's something I'm hoping as we're coming back to um, I'm teaching in person that I'm going to do um, for people in the Long Island area. I'm going to do um, uh, a class on tournaments. I don't know if we could do anything online. The tips from Barney are helpful. And the, the thing that my group did when we, we had the first tournament I ever played in was at my house and we did a charity thing and we had like five tables. My group practiced with a timer because you have to play 
um, four games and usually 50, 5 minutes. So it, it, the timing, you know, fast and slow in Mahjong is always um, a bone. It can often be a bone of contention, but in a tournament, you got to finish quickly. Um, okay. Other questions? Um, I'm scrolling through. If you want to raise your hand, oh, I think Diane raised her hand. Um, there's a bunch of questions. Um, hold on, let me see. <laughs> I'm not answering this one question. Diane, do you want, I'm gonna ask to unmute. Diane, if you wanna unmute, you can start talking. Okay, okay. Um, hi, I have two questions. Um, number one, you know, when you want, like after the first lap, you want to stop the passing. Now, some people, what they do is they're stuck between two hands and they'll stop the passing. Is that acceptable? Okay. I'm going to jump in on this one. Anybody for any reason can stop the passing. That's the Mahjong rule. And I'm going to quote you from Tom Sloper. If you do it too much, people will not want to play with you. Um, so if you, you know what, I remember playing online a number of years ago and the, and the screen name would get on and she'd stop the passing after on every game. And I chatted her, which I didn't do too much. And I said, you stop the passing after every game. I'm not playing with you anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> so it's tricky when you're playing with, you know, if they're friends. But if somebody does that, and this gets into trying to keep harmony, maybe you want to talk to that person on the side and say, you know, if you're having trouble picking a hand, maybe you just pick one. Because when you stop the passing, it really um, is not, you know, uh, people don't like it when you do it too often. It's not because you're between two hands. Then pick a hand and then and go with it. And the uh, second, I'm sorry, and the second, Second question is this, do you play with 13 tiles or do you play with 14 tiles? Oh I think, boy. I no, think we, the play, we play with National Mahjong League rules. That's what I thought. That's 13 tiles. tiles. The right. 14 tiles is a table rule. And um, if you've got, and you know what? God help you if you're ever going to play in a tournament and you're playing 14 tiles. It can throw you off. I say with a lot of the tables rules, which includes things I'm not even gonna talk about. If the Mahjong League wanted us to do that, they would have that in their rules. There's a reason we have rules and we play 13 tiles. I know on the East Coast of Florida, I hear a lot about 14 tiles. My friend who's down there is dealing with that. But I stopped playing in my original groups that I formed because they wanted to go for 14 tiles and I wouldn't do it. So. I play the Mahjong League rules. I teach it and I play it. And I think- Thank you. Can we thank you. Diane's question? You. Um, somebody followed up with, what do you consider a good reason to stop the Charleston? When you don't have three tiles to pass, or if I only had two flowers and a tile and I could not force myself gotcha. to do that. But that's rare. Because right. if I've got two flowers, I'm going to try to use it. And like you said before, which I really never heard the term before, but it's great to think of it way, the across is the must pass. Other than that, you know, your left, you could steal and then you could steal. So really you just have to get that across. And that's then a, that's the toughest pass in the Charleston sometimes. And if you're not on Facebook, um, if you're not, you can go facebook.com slash group slash Mahjong community. We just recently shared Tom Sloper has a decision tracker for during the Charleston. Because basically, I think he studied it or someone else studied it. If you're stopping it because you're between two hands, the likelihood of winning is not improved. You're not improving your odds by doing it. Where if you're stopping it because you're close, that's a different story. So if you go to Facebook, we just recently shared that. If not, you can go to sloperama.com and look for the Charleston decision tracker. And you know, Diane, that's something to tell your friend. You're not telling her not to do it. You're giving her the facts that, you know, this was tracked and this is not 
good mahjong. It's not going to help you. So. And then Trudy wants to know, what about passing passing wins in Charleston? I mean, I guess. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm really passing a, a north, north, south. Well, you know what? I will tell you, I think the Mahjong League improved the Winds and Dragons section, not only last year, but even more this year. They're not the stepchild they've been um, in the, I'm playing, I guess, I don't know, 14 or 15 years. But one thing I think I would tell you, I would pass a North, a South, an East or a West before I'd pass a Dragon. Um, but again, it's also knowing what your Majanista competitors saving. Um, they, one of my groups of early students, and they're still playing 12 years later, when I've subbed with them, they don't play the wins. They never used to. So I knew what was coming around with them, and I knew I could pass that. I know one of the women, I don't think she's on tonight, but she may be here. <laughs> she has admitted she loves dragons. So I'm not going to likely pass too many dragons to her. So, you know, it depends on what your hand is, what you're, you know, talking about wins. In my old, old days, when I was first playing in my first kind of up Mahjong game, there was a woman who, there was an easy win hand on the card. This must be 12 years ago. She went for that hand all the time. People were irate. We talked about it. Should we not pass her wins? You know, because she went for that same hand every time. So it's knowing what your competitors, your Majanista friends are going to do. Yeah. And you know what? You got to play your hand also. Eileen, do you want us to unmute you? So you can, okay. You could unmute. Okay. Um, I just, I'm just curious on something. I don't have a question, just curiosity. Do you all have betters? We stopped betting years ago, and I'm just curious, how many are still betting? We are in our game because it gives the person out something to do. You know, um, not just they have to go sit down and check their you know, their text messages. I was just curious more than anything because we stopped a long time ago. I didn't, I wanted to continue, but the other one. I know, know. And, and Dara and my regular game, we do not usually. And I think a lot of people said they were annoyed by someone walking behind them and walking around the table. But, <laughs> you know, it's a personal thing. You know, I, thank you. Also some of the betters give a hand away, like, ooh, wow. Yeah, you know? it's true. <laughs> And the Maja League rules, I mean, we could do a whole talk on etiquette. I mean, you are not allowed to talk if you're dead or if you're the better. There are, you know, the, the Mahjong police will come after you. <laughs> I've been playing, I've been playing for 50 years with some of the same girls. That's a oh, long wow. time. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thanks. And then I think um, Inez, I'm gonna ask. Can you unmute? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wanted to ask when you are between two hands on that uh, after the first Charleston, what criteria do you use to determine what hand you will go for? Well, we talked about pairs. If I'm between two hands, I'm gonna pick a hand that doesn't have the pairs. Okay. And, and also, you know, it depends also what your combinations are. You know, um, if you can call for more tiles. The wonderful thing about that golden hand, you know, the consecutive run, the ones and twos, threes and fours, um, you might be able to call more for a hand like that. So it depends what what your tiles are. The also. odds of the odds of getting what you need. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Right. And you saw that hand when I was looking at two, four, six, eights, and I ended up going with the four cracks, five cracks, six bands, seven bands, because I could call the four cracks, I could call the five cracks. So I could call a lot of those tiles. We, um, I allowed Amy to, Amy Rady has a question. Right. Uh, I wanted to ask you your opinion. I have a situation where I play with very seasoned women and they like to uh, play atomic. They also like to double when they roll a double and they put a joker in 
in one of the walls. And the fact of the matter is, this is not according to national Mahjong League rules. So do you say anything or you just go along with the rest of them because of the fact that they've been playing a lot longer than you have? Are you the new the newbie in the group? I am. Well, <laughs> when you join a group and they have established rules, you kind of have to go along okay. with them. But you have a choice. I mean, and yes, if you guys don't know what Atomic is out there, new players, just cover your ears. You should never <laughs> know about it. Um, again, it's it's a table rule. I think it was taken from the special hands in Canasta, but we won't go there. Um, you know, it's a table rule. And you have to ask about table rules when you join a new group. If you don't love those rules, Amy, then you might want to just look for a different game. Right. I had a chance to go back to a group I was playing with pre-pandemic, and they, I'm not even going to tell you, they did Atomic and they did something else that I could not stand. Mush. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, hopefully cover your ears if you're new players. And you know what? I And I like the people. They were lovely people. I just didn't want to play that way. Right. Yep. So I found other groups. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because what Donna and I feel, and when we learned, we, we didn't even learn the correct way, but what I feel is it's really great to have a background of either, you know, Toby and Greg's book or taking a class from a teacher live and making sure you know the rules. So then when you do go to someone's game and they play by house rules, you could recognize that it's a house rule. Mm -hmm. So in our group, you know, every once in a while people will play atomic, but it's not that often. So it doesn't change every hand. And um, one of our friends likes to mush, which is after the whole optional, you put tiles in the center and you pick, and we just didn't like it. So we didn't decide to do it. Um, one question we just got is somebody asked, what is your opinion on exposing early in the game, thereby limiting your options? You know, again, it depends how set you are with that hand and do you need jokers? But if you're set with a hand, you know, one, one out of every 100 times, I'm going to get five, seven, seven. You know, I'm going to get a solid hand at the end of the passing. And I am set to call everything. I'm going to, the, the, the more you expose, the quicker you're going to get to the finish line. Yeah, you're going to show people what you're doing. But you might pick Mahjong yourself and you're putting, in a tournament, I will tell you, people expose quickly because it puts people on the defensive because you get penalized for throwing um, into certain exposures. So, and, and this card, I don't know how um, you guys feel, Darren, Donna, there's so many ways to make Mahjong that I think the quicker you get to the finish line. Yeah. It, well, last it, year I felt that if you didn't call right away, you didn't get a second chance. Someone won that quickly. It was just a very quick call where I, I don't know necessarily. There's a lot of options this year, but I mean, the three times we've played, it just seemed to be a little bit longer so far. Okay. So if anybody wants, do you want to talk, Grace? And then Did we should wanna... wrap it up there. It's getting late. Okay. Unmute. okay. Yeah. I thought I got this answer, but I want to clarify because I am a teacher and we play at the library, so we can't bet money or anything. And there's like 200 people on our list, by the way. So my question is, is that, with this new card, if you play, or any card, really, if you play a quint, and you know how you get five tile, five tile, and you have all four of the tile, and all you need is the joker to modge, okay? You got every, all four of your, say, four bams, four uh, cracks, whatever. You got all your tiles. If someone throws a joker down, can you pick that up to modge? Never, never, ever, ever can you but, call a joker. It's the safest tile to throw. You can't call a joker ever. But the question is that how can you win? If all you the have to, you have to pick the joker and if oh, no. it's not, a, not say available. For example, okay, say for example, because someone asked a question that someone, I don't remember what group and wrote it down and I, and I read this. Say for example, all the jokers are taken, uh, all the jokers are taken literally except for their last one. And that person throws it down. You still can't pick up? Never, ever, ever. So guess what? 
you're not going to make the hand and you're going to throw safe tiles. That's the luck. Because okay. you could have drawn that joker if the luck hit you. You may okay. have picked that joker, but never can you call. And if you're teaching, please teach your students. No, no, I thought so too. I thought so too. Just recently I read that someone threw that question out and they they mentioned they could pick up the joker I'm like what are you i don't know where about? you read it you didn't read it on modern mahjong i'm sure <laughs> no, no 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 but i don't remember i have to go find it but i thought it was kind of strange too and i thought well what if all the jokers are taken and that was the last joker thrown yeah, out you're, yeah you're out of luck <sighs> okay yeah, that's okay. the hand that you had to have the four twos and then the you, you say for example you had, had to have the joker yeah, I'd say you had everything except one joker. You have to pick it. You have yeah, but, to pick it. Okay, you I know that. Okay, but if there's no more to be picked, I guess you're out of luck. Right? Yeah, okay. it's, it's a game of luck and skill. Okay. Um, do you guys want to put up contact? I have a yeah, website. If you have, yeah. if you have questions, you could certainly email me. I okay. do. I'm doing some strategies um, online. I am doing a, if you haven't, and uh, you want another card review or you haven't um, availed yourself, I'm doing two card reviews this week. So watch my website. I still am teaching virtually. And um, this has been wonderful. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much um, Donna and Zara, for hosting yeah. us. Just Very informative. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I got a question. How do you get into that one website that's kind of funny looking that, uh, uh, was it I wrote down earlier? LBT or something like that. I try to go into it and wouldn't let me get in. I'm not sure which one. It's, it, you know how, like, when you sign up for this, on the bottom it said, "Did you sign up for these other two? And one was a Zoom. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so you're talking about Bitly. Bitly, Bitly yeah. yes, is yes. just a shortened way to make something easier to share. So if you go to modernmajan.com and click on the left hand side, it says events. If yes. you scroll down. You'll see um, Michelle Frizzell is our next event. You could just click on the link right there and you don't have to worry about. Oh, good. The link. Yeah. Okay. That's why that's my only question. Thank you. So just, um, we shared um, Donna's contact information. This is our currently going on Alzheimer's Association tournament. Um, Donna, I'll, I'll do the screens if you want to talk about more. Yeah, no, as Dara said, we have an, um, We've been doing online virtual tournaments for the last almost two years. We have one going on now that's raising money for Alzheimer's Association and we're starting it now and it's going through June 21st is when your scores are due. So you can sign up now on modernmaja.com and it raises money for Alzheimer's Association, which is great. Um, yeah, we just really wanna help, uh, you know, thank everybody for supporting us because we do these free and, you know, we run a small business. We really enjoy connecting people and learning ourselves. So here's our website. <laughs> Dara can talk about Majan Mudita. That's her thing. The word, yeah, word we came up with when someone said that they needed a jealousy button of pictures. And we're like, no, 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 you're not jealous. You're excited for everybody else who's enjoying Majan. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And our next event um, is May 4th, Wednesday, May 4th. Um, mm -hmm with Michelle Frizzell at 7 p.m. So she's gonna talk some strategy too. So the top three strategies for National Mahjong League play. So that'll be very enjoyable too. So we wanna thank everybody again. Thank you, Donna, really appreciate it. Thank you to all the Donnas that came tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy really the new card. With everyone. Thank you. Enjoy the new card, have fun.